But here's an issue. They punch me and they're shooting me. Oh dear. Oh dear, Cyberpunk. Oh, it's happened. <laughs> I'm an immortal. Can you beat Cyberpunk using only your bare hands? Well, today we're going to find out if it is in fact possible. Now, immediately, those of you who have played the game will be going, well, of course Spiff can. All he has to do is just use the gorilla arms. But no, I will not stoop so low as to actually cheat and modify my fists in any way. That's right, I'm not destroying my character's body. I will not be giving them giant cyber fists with the ability to punch for a car. No, instead we're doing it the old fashioned way. That's right, we are punching people with the vanilla strength of our bare bloody hands and it's going to be glorious. Who knows if it's actually possible to beat the game using your bare hands, but there is one thing I do know and that's that I'm going to definitely be able to achieve it thanks to a small quantity of minor exploits left in by the developers which are mwah, perfectly balanced. They'll be helping us along our incredible journey of destroying this game and showing off just how easy it is. The fact that the greatest weapon of all is no weapon, excluding of course the incredible weapon that is the rippling strength of our character's biceps. So without further ado, make sure you sat back, relaxed, you have a nice warm cup of tea in hand, and if you're new here, then heck, you can even subscribe. Right now, let's dive into this glorious video. So we're going to be starting a brand new game in Cyberpunk on the Very Hard Difficulty, because I like a challenge. Now, Very Hard Difficulty, contrary to Normal and Hard Difficulty, is um, a cakewalk. Excluding, of course, just like in normal and hard difficulty, you'll be occasionally one-shot by random mines lying on the ground, and there is nothing you can do to stop that. Anyway, let's throw ourselves into this glorious game. Now, I'm gonna go for a street kid path, because I think it makes sense considering we're creating a character that is just punching everyone, and we're gonna create a lovely handsome man. Because, of course, we're going for the strongest man in the universe. It only makes sense that we go for the qualities that are necessary in a strong individual, like a giant man sausage, or just making him look exceedingly strong. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I've made our hero for today. This is the legendary pirate, my friends. This is Long Dong Silver. That's right, he's a pirate and he is exceedingly powerful. And most importantly, he has a long dong. Let's go down to the all-important slider, which is the real reason why anyone bought this game. Ah, oh, yes, for the all-important slider. Do you want it to be default, big, or sadly, what Long Dong Silver's actual size is? Yep, that's right, Long Dong Silver is simply a man who likes to compensate. You see, if he names himself the opposite of what he actually is, maybe that makes it true. This is our glorious character, let's throw him into the world. Of course, we need to build up his stats, and we will basically be sinking every single point we can into body, as well as also cools, so that we can try and stealth past various parts of this game. Right, let's throw ourselves into the glorious world of cyberpunk. With good old Long Dong Silver, into the world we go. We've got an entire two-hour tutorial segment to beat. Oh my goodness, I can't wait. Now we're in to the first mission of the tutorial kind of segment, which takes several hours long. I will be skipping through most of it, don't worry. And naturally in this tutorial segment, uh, we're meant to use a gun. We've been given a gun, here it is. Uh, naturally, we're not gonna be using the gun at all. We don't We don't need guns. Long Dong Silver does not actually need any weapon. He's not a pacifist, by no means is he a pacifist, but he is instead going to use his bare hands. Right, let's go beat this mission using our bare hands. Right, let's go open up this door. It's magic time. All right, we've got some evil people in here. So it's time to do some stealthy takedowns. Here we go. Grab and then kill and hide body. Lovely stuff. Oh, wow. Lovely. They're leaving. Oh, yeah. We're going to be able to stealth our way through this entire thing. Grab this person. Kill this person. Lovely. No weapons used so far. Just don't need them. All right. Now let us kill this final person. Ah, lovely. Everyone's dead. All right. There we go. That's mission one complete without actually using any weapon. And here we go. It's only going to get better from here. More punching, though. Definitely. Now, I've got an interesting problem here which is that in the tutorial segment, um, I meant to defeat these bad men, but this is evidently a gun, and I'm not allowed to use guns, so um, instead I guess I can use my bare fists. No, that action's blocked. Well, this is gonna be difficult. I suppose I'm just gonna have to med my way through this entire segment, because I'm not gonna kill them. Killing them is dangerous. Go away. Shoo. Shoo. I'm not killing any of these people, unless it's with my bare hands. Leave me alone. Okay, apparently they could just die, so I didn't even have to do anything. Perfect. Now, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. We finally finished the tutorial, and that means we've started Act 2 of Cyberpunk, which is the perfect spot to now actually completely break the game. Now, of course, as you know, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to effectively be a fist-only video, where I intend to prove that you can very easily beat Cyberpunk using only your bare hands. Now, the thing is, bare hands are okay. As you can see, they drain stamina, they do a bit of damage. To be specific, they do between 20 
38 and 34 damage, however they actually do a little bit more, provided you charge up the punch. And what's very interesting in my opinion is the fact that apparently the fists are classed as an assault rifle. I'm, I wouldn't be so sure about that cyberpunk, they, they don't look like an assault rifle to me, they look like hands. Oh my goodness, who knows. Now in order to basically break the game and create the build necessary to destroy balance, what you need to do is get into Act 2 of the game, also known as simply getting through the tutorial section, and then all we need to do is make our way over to the lovely Watson area, and just simply do a couple of side jobs. Also, I'm going to be stealing control of this vehicle. This vehicle is now mine, thank you very much. Oh dear, the police noticed. Well, it's fine. Right, now over to the Watson area we go, because we've got a whole bunch of missions to do. I mean, we don't actually have to do that many, and all we have to do is use our bare hands, which is surprisingly easy. And we've arrived in the lovely Watson area, where naturally the NPCs pop in and out of existence randomly, because, you know, the game is still pretty, pretty broken, but oh well, we, we love it nonetheless. It's time for me to go collect my money. Alright, there we go, we've collected our money, fantastic. And now all I want to do is just do a couple of random side missions around the Watson area, as that should trigger the one necessary mission that we're looking for to fire. Now, the one mission that you need in order to completely break Cyberpunk and allow this very difficult challenge to work is the very humble mission of Send in the Clowns. That's right. And it's simply a mission you get by just loitering around the general area of Watson. And here we have it, ladies and gentlemen. The legendary Ozobozo has uh, actually called us, and we're actually in the prime place. All I had to do to get it to fire was just kind of go AFK from my PC uh, and park the car here for about 15 minutes, and then a message popped up. So uh, that's generally all you need to get this to fire. And now, good old Captain Longdong Silver is going to start this mission to basically allow us to turn this challenge into a complete walk in the park, because punching everyone is actually quite difficult. I mean, sure, we do about anywhere between 300 and 500 damage when we punch someone now, but that's hardly enough to really get us to the end game without quite a few challenges. So let's start this mission. All you need to do is open up the messages and give this lovely guy a call. So we give him a call and he's going to tell us to go pick him up. Now, he's a bit of an odd character. He basically just wants us to pick him up. And honestly, it's not a very difficult mission, but the joy thing is we're not actually here to do the mission and here we go now all we have to do is pick him up now of course before you do this as we're about to execute an exploit make sure to drop down a save just in case things go wrong now what you want to do is drive up to the entrance and honk your horn if you don't know how to do that it's left control on pc all right and there we go so we press left control and our good friend ozob gets into the car now he's a bit of an odd character uh he has a grenade for a nose which is pretty unique and he's a bit of a clown all right now we're gonna go take him on a journey all right now our mission is pretty simple to drive over to a Chinese takeaway in Little China. Pretty nice and simple. However, we're going to be doing some pretty unique things on our way there. Now, the thing is, this is actually a surprisingly basic side quest. There's nothing too fancy about it, and the reward isn't necessarily fantastic. However, it's the way in which this mission can be exploited that makes it truly very powerful. Now, we're pulling up close to the mission area now, and this is where you want to start the exploit. So, what we're going to do is we simply need the police to aggro on to us. In order to do that, uh, run over and kill a pedestrian. Although in this game, that can be quite a challenge because, you know, cyberpunk AI and all that. Maybe one or two more pedestrians, you never know. There's no such thing as too many civilian casualties in my line of work. So there we go, the crime gets reported and a police drone is then immediately summoned. Lovely stuff. Now, all you want to do is pull up to the parking spot and the police drone will probably start shooting at us. But that's okay, because all that matters is good old Ozob here is going to wait for us and trigger the cut scene. Right, and then what we want to do is simply get out the car, although actually this is impossible because we have to wait for Ozob to actually go do his stuff, but as soon as he enters the Chinese place, we can actually leave. Uh, the police will be shooting at us though, but you will notice we're taking no damage. This is because we're in a cutscene, technically, uh, and this makes us temporarily immortal to all combat, which is good because there are 700 police officers in front of us. Now, the interesting thing about this is that um, we're now immortal uh, because we're, technically speaking, still in the cutscene. Now, what happens, of course, is as soon as the cutscene ends, we lose our immortality. Now, that's a pretty bad thing. However, it's possible for the cutscene to simply never end. How do you do that? Well, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is, as soon as your immortality fires, is to run. I'm pretty sure you can see where this exploit is going. Oh my goodness, it's truly spicy. Now, what's rather interesting, ladies and gentlemen, that I've noticed about Cyberpunk is the fact that the game has actually died in terms of the YouTube algorithm. For about a week, Cyberpunk was all over the front page of YouTube, but now the entire trending page has kind of died and Cyberpunk is nowhere to be seen. So in order to revive Cyberpunk,
cyberpunk content on the platform. Give this video a like and comment on it. Seriously, I want to see if it's possible to get a cyberpunk video back onto trending. We managed it with the Spore video. We somehow managed to get Spore, a game from 1994, probably, onto the front page of trending. Who knows how it actually happened, but we did it. So who knows if we can also do the same thing with a modern game. Anyway, you know what to do. Now, back into the exploits. Right, now once again, all we need to do is murder a pedestrian. Uh, it's pretty simple. There we go, pedestrian murder, crime reported. The police will immediately appear out of the woodworks in some way, shape or form. And now all we need to do is simply pull up to the parking spot and wait. So there we go, we pull up to the spot. And all we want to do is press F as much as possible to try and get out the car. And all we have to do is wait for him to get into the lovely Chinese restaurant. Now we can get out of the car. And now that that's happened, we just want to run as far away as possible. As humanly far away as possible would be fantastic. So we will just completely and utterly leg it in the opposite direction. This will cause the car and the local area to completely despawn, which is brilliant as that will leave us with our permanent immortality. It does mean that we do fail the mission of sending the clowns, but um, failing the mission of sending the clowns is completely redundant now that we can no longer take damage. How on earth do we know that we can no longer take damage? Well, allow me to demonstrate on... Um, well, I was just going to punch a random human in the street, but you know what? I can do better than that. Here we go. Evil assault in progress going on over there. We can go be a hero. That's right. Long Dong Silver, sometimes a hero in his spare time. All right, let's go fight people with our newfound ability of not being able to die. So punch. Well, that was nice. 937 damage in one go is pretty good for fists. I will say that. But um, what about all these other people? Hello? You can see me, right? Yep. Come on. Aggro slowly. And they finally aggroed. But here's an issue. They punched me and they're shooting me. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Cyberpunk. Oh, it's happened. <laughs> I am an immortal. Captain Long Dong Silver. He knows exactly how to deal with you ragamuffins. 1,473 damage for fist is absolutely glorious. My goodness. Right, let me just steal all of this. Lovely stuff. And punch. And big punch. Ah, oh, lovely stuff. Yeah, so um, this is a bit of an interesting point in the plotline of Cyberpunk now because we can't actually die. <laughs> it's brilliant. Now, of course, this is a relatively useful power because um, it has turned our lovely character into effectively God. Uh, we can't be killed, which is perfect. Absolutely perfect considering we're fighting all of these evil bad guys because we can just punch explosives with our bare hands. Walk up to these guys, slowly walk around and just punch them. Because I mean, this game's actually kind of difficult when you think about it, especially when you're using your fists. But it's actually a lot easier when you just walk up to people and punch them once. Now remember, I'm not killing them. I'm simply knocking them unconscious. If they want to walk over here and fight me personally, well then I can just punch this explosive canister at my feet and kill them. But it won't kill me because I'm an immortal. Now come to me, tiny tech ninja. Yes, that's right. Life is unfair when you're facing off against an immortal pirate with a massive schlonger. Now, um, this is a pretty powerful ability because it technically means uh, we can't die and uh, this lasts forever. And the only way to disable it that I know of is to get back inside the vehicle which you left over near the send in the clowns and that should re-trigger your mortality. But otherwise, uh, this is it. For the low, low cost of failing one random side quest that I think gives you about 4,000 euro dollars, uh, you can instead become God. And that's pretty useful in Night City because it's very easy to hurt yourself. I mean, just getting run over is pretty dangerous. But now, you can't actually be knocked over. Cars simply rub into you and then come to a complete stop. Equally, you can take control of any vehicle that you like, like for example this vehicle, then step outside of said vehicle and punch the owner. And the reason why this is good is because, um, actually wait, no, apparently the owners of vehicles are immortal. Yeah, who knows why the developers allowed that to happen. But yeah, apparently if you're driving a car, you can't die. But if you're walking on the side of the street, you also can't die. Am I just gonna have to run these guys over? Come on, I just want the police to fight me. Right, let us run over that individual. There we go. Crime reported. Perfect. And that person. There we go. Two crimes reported. That's enough to really summon the police now. And here they come. They throw a grenade at us. Grenade does nothing. Big flying death drone. We can just punch it out the sky. There we go. Punch, punch, punch. Ah, glorious. Police officer. Punch. Good stuff. Oh, and you. You get punched. And you. And now we're up to tier four, which means they send in the big guns, the really big guns. Uh, most importantly, the teleporting ninja sausages. All right, where are the teleporting ninjas? Well, I think I see one. Here we go. Look, it's the maximum security super duper tough cop guy. Sadly, he can't defeat us. Whereas we can just punch him again, again, again. This is going to take quite a few punches. Okay, look, fists aren't good in this game. And there we go. We've killed them. We're 
unstoppable. I am your new god. All right, we should probably drive on out of here because, um, oh wait, sorry, we can't get in the car. Oh, that is actually the one way you can die, ladies and gentlemen, I have just realized. The only way you can die is if you're in a car explosion because the game is hard-coded that no matter how much health you have, if you are inside a car when it explodes, it activates an instant kill switch. You see, you have the bonus in a cutscene of permanent immortality from incoming damage. However, you don't have protection from just someone pushing a button saying this killed you. So what we're going to do is reactivate our immortality and go take it on a whirl and see how easy the game is now that we can't actually die. Now, one of the best things about this exploit is even though our character technically died in a car crash, we simply load the latest save and the uh, exploit stays on. It actually doesn't end at all. Uh, we are still completely immortal despite the fact that our character died and we just simply loaded back a bit. That's because the game um, is completely broken. Yeah, uh, this is it. It's immortality for the rest of the game. Feels pretty balanced, cyberpunk, not gonna lie. Uh, this makes beating everything relatively easy because even the most difficult and most challenging fights that we can find are actually a complete and utter walk in the park. All right now, I think there's only one enemy left. My goodness, we've completely uh, just decimated them, really. I mean, our character's exceedingly powerful. We can't die from full damage. We can just walk up here and go a punch and a punch. Feels great. <laughs> this is going to be one of the easiest ways to grind up stats that I've ever seen. But yes, now at level 17, we've become more powerful than any other character ever, which is pretty darn useful indeed. Right, what I'll do is I'll now just uh, steal this card. Don't mind me. Uh, this one's now mine. And I'm going to go uh, progress on with one of the main quests. All we have to do is go meet with Takimura and uh, break into a place and install some malware. Now, this is a bit of a difficult mission. There's a lot of high-end enemies in this area, which we might struggle to defeat. Luckily, however, Captain Longdong Silver is now actually a god. Consequently, this combat might be a little bit easier than the entire development team of Cyberpunk would be expecting. Right, we've made our way over to the more industrial area where the Arasaka compound is located, and this is, um, oh, don't mind that pedestrian that we ran over. Oh, and that other one. So easy to do. These pedestrians just kind of get in the way of everything. Just leave me alone, police officers. I've got a mission that I need to do. Look, I need to meet with Takamura. Hello, Takamura. Excellent timing indeed. Guys, please, I'm doing a critical story cutscene at the moment. Please, can you just leave me alone, okay? Shoo, go away. Right, Takamura, please, can you speed up this dialogue a bit? We're kind of both getting shot at pretty heavily. Like, you've been shot seven times in the foot, but it's a good thing that you're also a critical NPC at the moment, so you can't die. No, don't get in the car. The car is not dangerous. I can't get in the car. Okay, apparently I don't need to do anything, though. Oh my god, Takamura, you're murdering them. Takamura, please, watch out. Oh my goodness, this man is insane. Right, let me just um walk around poor Takamura. I think he might die here. I feel like that car is going to explode at any moment and kill Takamura. What even is this game? Right, goodbye Takamura. Drive off with the happy car. Oh, goodness. Right, uh, so my job is to break into the Arasaka compound here. So um, what I'll do is I'll just go for the simplest option of uh, climb over this gate here. Really good security systems, guys. Now, they do have this giant mech monster here. I mean, just look at it. That thing looks scary. Um, but luckily, I can just punch him, I guess. I mean, it's not doing much damage because this guy is made of solid metal. But no, no, apparently I can kill him. Just got to punch a lot. I mean, it's solid iron versus bare fists and, well, apparently I win. Right, now let's just go into the factory and um, leave these guys out here. We don't actually need to fight any of them, really. If anything, it kind of slows us down. Uh, so what we're going to do is just walk into the factory floor here. Uh, normally you want to stealth around this section. Uh, luckily, we don't have to do that. We can just smash this window and climb through it. All right, so we're just going to climb through that window there and make our way over to the uh, kind of floor over here. Uh, now, there are a lot of guards that are technically seeing what we're doing, but luckily, in terms of the plot, none of them are going to report that we actually tampered with this float, so all is fine. Let's ju just jack in here. And yeah, it, it's looking like um, Cyberpunk's getting pretty pretty easy. I mean, this is, what, the hardest difficulty in the game? Um, it feels like a challenge at certain points. Um, nah, I'm just I'm just joking. No, there's no challenge here at all. Apparently, I've got to get out via the roof, so um, sure, but I can do that. All right, apparently, I need to leave quickly, else I might be discovered. Yep, stealth is of the essence right now. Very important, so let's just 
waltz on out of here lovely stuff and oh look at that what a great heist all right now all i need to do is simply wait for takamura to give me a call again um and then we can progress our way through the story now one of the things i don't like in this game is the fact that you can't kill children in fact you can't even attack them however the one thing you can do is poison them with nerve gas uh, because apparently children will still walk into deadly clouds of poison gas they might live today however young taylor bond over there will now die an early death at age 20 due to their lungs being shredded by nerve gas and of course the easiest way to get away from any police officer uh, simply throw yourself off the map oh wait no this was apparently the easiest way to find more police officers my goodness what's over here oh isn't this the end of the map pretty sure the map ends over here somewhere oh wait no we're not even close to the end of the map oh look there are some evil enemies over there <sighs> trying to pick apart that poor person's body my goodness this looks like a job for captain long dong man yes is it a bird is it a plane no it's no mortal god with very punchy fists hello i've fallen from the sky i'm not very graceful at the moment however i am very punchy very very punchy now these guys slightly higher level than most of the enemies we've been fighting as uh, so they take a couple of hits to drop luckily i have infinite quantities of hits as my fists do not use ammunition unless you count t as ammunition in which case they use a lot of t oh cool i've got a mission i think to go break someone out of prison right now all i have to do is get inside of this hospital and break a lady out now this is meant to be a very hard mission because we're too low level uh, evidently you can tell that by the fact that this man has a massive skull and crossbones above his head uh, meaning that i'm not likely to beat him uh, the good news is i can just walk past him but there are a lot of high level enemies here that look very challenging and apparently i need to get inside of a restricted area luckily uh, i'm sure i could probably talk to the receptionist and maybe talk my way through now it doesn't look like there's any easy way to get inside of this ward um and sadly i accidentally just lobbed a poison grenade i thought i was gonna hack them for a moment but um instead it looks like i'm just gonna have to punch my way through here uh luckily that's gonna be relatively simple as of course god mode so despite the fact that these guys have 4,000 health uh, i can just melee my way through this entire place don't mind me random doctors i've just got a waltz on through i've got an important person to save i'm a hero i don't care that you're a medical professional trying to protect your patients from what is evidently a lunatic who's walked in and is now murdering people but i have a very important mission ah oh, classic ai just completely bugging out here ah oh, i love this game okay now apparently my mission is to take the guard's keys uh so sadly that means he needs to just die now sorry random guard but um it's death mode for you punch 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 come on could you just die eventually please Right, there we go he's dead give me your keys fantastic access token picked up let's go break them out of their cells right, we're gonna open this up all right there we go fantastic we've managed to get this person and all i need to do is escort them out of the hospital um maybe there's a way to i don't know exit from the roof oh it looks like there is oh that's nice and simplistic maybe there was a roof entrance this entire time maybe i didn't need to murder all those guards uh, it's too late to think about the moral quandaries of my actions let us just instead walk out there we go and fantastic there we go fantastic job complete we're an absolute hero my goodness we're just simply the greatest aren't we i will say that a lot of these palm trees seem pretty broken um for some reason after becoming an immortal the wind affecting the palm trees has been dialed up to like 700 million like what is this i don't think palm trees do this i've i've seen palm trees in real life they don't do that <laughs> now one of the ways you can make money in this game is by doing fist fights uh now these are actually quite challenging because it's kind of timing rhythms against lots of different enemies it's actually a really fun little aspect of this game however of course when you're playing on the highest difficulty like me uh, it can actually be quite challenging to do some of these fights now naturally i'm heading to a fight which is labeled very hard meaning we have very low chances of actually winning however we have one slight advantage in a fist fight that our opponent doesn't have and that being that it is physically impossible for us to take damage all right here we go super interesting fight time labeled very hard time to get my fist ready who are we fighting um, Ah, we're fighting El Caesar. Lovely. Oh, now my goodness, this man is putting his entire car on the line. Um, so for four grand, basically, I can get my four grand back if I win and I keep the car. I, I mean, this car is absolutely insane. So, of course, take four grand. Let's do this because uh, this match is kind of fixed, El Caesar. All right, let's do this. It's punchy time. Ready to rumble. Here we go. Now, he's got a lot of health. As all we're going to do is open by punching him in the head. Uh, we do 81 damage because this man is, of course, quite late game uh, and very strong. But luckily, uh, we can just keep punching him and 
he can't fight back. There we go. And we'll just uh, keep stun locking him into a corner. Uh, this is going to take quite a bit because it turns out each of my punches do about 1% of his total health pool. So um, this man's health pool is probably close to about 10,000, if not higher. Oh, uh, right. I'm just going to have to kind of back him into a corner and just continuously heavy attack him. All right, there we go. This is slowly working. We've kind of pushed him back into a corner where we can just do light attacks continuously. And that keeps him stun locked. All right, now we've almost got him down to only three quarters of his starting health. All of this for a car? Now, the only reasons we're having difficulties here is because technically the game scales the damage you do against enemies based on your level in comparison to them. So because this guy is probably like, I don't know, level 40 or something, our attacks are hardly doing any damage in comparison to him, which makes him a bit of a nightmare to fight. But luckily, uh, we're going to win anyway. All right, you're down to almost 10% health. I suppose I could just leave an auto clicker here and just continuously wail away. I suppose that would eventually kill him. Might just take a very long time. And here we have it. Fantastic. He will soon be defeated now. Come on, just a couple more hits. You are dead, my friend. I win this fight. Oh, lovely stuff. Lovely stuff. We've completely shredded him. I'll let the guy keep the money. I'll take the insane car because it looks hilarious. And well, I mean, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. We have this absolutely insane vehicle, which we won from a perfectly fair and balanced fist fight, which was 100% completely legal. And uh, in no way did I cheat in any way, shape or form. And now I get this insanely gold plated vehicle. I mean, this is just exactly what you'd want if you're a pirate, just immortality. And then the most insane vehicle of all time. Oh, it's fantastic. Well, I mean, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This is definitive proof that you can beat cyberpunk using only your fists and no weapons whatsoever. Who knew it was completely and utterly perfectly balanced with absolutely no exploits whatsoever. Cyberpunk, it's a perfect game. It needs no patches. It's just insanely balanced. And of course, if you've enjoyed what you've seen here today, then make sure to give the video a like. It does massively help us out. And hey, why not consider subscribing for more absolutely insane videos where we play games in ways that the developers never ever intended anyone to play. So hey, why not consider subscribing to join the community today? And as always, a massive thank you to each and every one of our majestic patrons who make these videos all the more possible. Seriously, pat yourselves on the back, you lovely sausages. And at the end of this video, well, you know what? I've got a couple of videos that you might also like to watch if you enjoyed this. That's right, I have an entire playlist of every single cyberpunk video that I've done. I've got playlists of every kind of video that I've done, and you can go check them all out. They're fantastic, well worth a watch. Anyway, go refill your cups of tea, unless of course your name's Dave and you drink coffee, in which case, be gone. And I will see each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely day, and goodbye for now.